Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to the Fertility for Colored Girls first webinar of the new year, first webinar of 2015. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our food, fitness, and fertility webinar. It's a great way to start off the new year and we have someone very special to present to us tonight and speak with us tonight. And first, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Bridget Alton, and I am on the Fertility for Color Girls communications team. So happy to be with you all on tonight. And now I am going to introduce our speaker, Nia Gassi, who is a fitness coach. She is a nutrition expert. She is phenomenal when it comes to talking about what your body needs for optimal results. And she is presenting our food, fitness, and fertility webinar tonight. Just a couple of little, um, excuse me, a couple of little housekeeping items. Um, if you have joined us online, you should see a chat box to the left of your screen. And that is where you can type questions. I believe Mia is going to go through her presentation first. And then if you have any questions, you can go ahead and send those through the chat window and she will get to them during her question and answer section of the presentation tonight. So again, if you have questions, sit them in the little box to the left so you don't forget them. And Mia will address them at the end of the webinar. And there's our Reverend Stacy saying hello and welcome. Hi, Reverend Stacy. Um, hi, Princess Shiloh. I know she can't be too far if mama is on the webinar. We are so grateful for her and I'm grateful for this new year with Fertility for Colored Girls. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Mia. Miss Mia, are you there? Well, good evening, everybody. And Bridget, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I want to echo Bridget's sentiments and say hey. happy new year. And welcome Reverend Stacy and Shiloh. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Shiloh. <laughs> I think we have a little feedback. Okay, we should we should be okay now. Go continue, please, Miss Mia. That was just Shiloh saying hello. Well, um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us this evening. And um, one of the reasons we we wanted to kick off the year with uh, this webinar, it, you know, food, fitness, and fertility, is because this time of year we're all kind of resetting and we're renewing our resolutions to do a better Your job. Your line is now and muted. With our wellness. And um, when it comes to facility, nothing could be more important than making sure that we are, that we have a strong foundation so that when we do conceive, that we are uh, in a place where the growing embryo will be nice and and secure within our bodies and getting all the health and nutrients that it needs in order to grow and um, be ready for uh, delivery. So we want to make sure that we are maximizing our fertility through nutrition. And so that's why we wanted to kick off the year with this webinar. So uh, just sit back and relax. And again, if you have questions, please feel, feel free to type them um, throughout the, um, the webinar but then I will get to them at the end so that um, I can make sure that I'm addressing whatever questions you may have, okay? So maximizing fertility, fertility through nutrition. As you all know that nutrition is one of, it's probably one of the most important aspects of wellness when it comes to um, a conceiving because our bodies are vessels and we should be repairing new lives. So therefore, the healthier our body is, the more likely we are to conceive and carry a baby to full. So rather than focusing on specific types of food, it's suggested that that we that women struggling with getting pregnant should seek out a healthier lifestyle holistically. So mind, body, and spirit, everything is interconnected. So what we're going to focus on, though, for the sake of this uh, webinar, is we're really going to focus more so on the um, the food aspect, the nutrition aspect, and then we'll touch upon some of the um, the uh, fitness aspects as well as the, uh, the spiritual aspect. Now, when we talk about um, what should we be doing in terms of our nutrition in order to enhance our chances of getting pregnant, basically we talk about an optimal diet that will best support the functioning of every system in the body including the reproductive system. 
So this means eating the right number of calories to support an ideal weight and choosing mostly nutrient-rich foods with treats or snacks with moderation. Those are key. The goal is to strive for a balanced diet full of healthy nutrients when you're trying to succeed. So if this doesn't work and you've been trying to get pregnant for more than a year, you should definitely make an appointment with the OBGYN to explore other possible problems. But increasing the nutrients your body does for through eating a nutritious diet and possibly taking supplements under the supervision of a nutritionist is very important. Um, it's these very nutrients that help our body to detoxify and also to stay healthy and stay fertile. Now, this next slide, I just want to emphasize here real briefly that even though this presentation is focused primarily on female infertility, the same principles and the same nutrients pretty much apply to your significant others and to your partner. So you can really take this information and share it with them as well, because it's just as important for them to um, really have, um, include all of these nutrients in their diet as it is for females. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Now, really, the, the website Getting Pregnant Fast states that vitamins play a significant role in fertility because they help balance hormones and keep the nervous system and organs functioning at an optimal level. So a healthy lifestyle consisting of a, a variety of vitamins, exercise, and regular visits to your health care provider can definitely help increase your fertility and aid in pregnancy. So eating foods that contain the following nutrients best increases the odds of becoming pregnant, and these are just some of them, but these are some of the most important ones. So like selenium, zinc, folic acid, vitamin C, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D complex, vitamin D and, and antioxidants. Foods high in all of these nutrients are going to be very, very key. So many of you... Um, I mean, I know that, you know, we all hear all of these different, you know, perspectives in terms of what we should be doing and how we should be doing it and what, you know, this diet is in this year, the next year is something else. Well, my philosophy is just keep it simple. <laughs> I mean, for, for, for me personally, the simpler something is, the easier it is for me to get and stick with. And so I would, I would have to um, advocate the same. You know, even for um, those of us that are trying to conceive, to keep it really, really simple um, by eating fresh fruits and vegetables as often as possible, uh, whole natural foods uh, versus processed foods. And then eating, uh, if you're uh, a meat eater, um, eating um, foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids, protein, and also fish like tuna and salmon. So those are really going to be important, but it's really simple. It's not, you know, rocket science. You know, eating the rainbow is, is going to be very key. And then sometimes you may need um, foundational support. Now, of course, it's always best to try to get most of your nutrients via a well-balanced diet. So again, eating the rainbow. But if you feel like your, your, your diet is not as balanced as it should be, um, then you may want to think about supplements. It is possible to get most of the nutrients in separate supplements, but of course, it's a lot more practical to have, you know, vitamins. You know, you know some people take prenatal vitamins, um, multivitamins, or fertility enhancing supplements that, that you can get from herbal stores that have all or most of the mentioned nutrients in one pill or capsule. So it really it just depends on you and your lifestyle and how you're eating. Uh, whether or not you think you can uh, increase your intake of fruits and vegetables and uh, nuts and seeds and whole grains and, and whole uh, dairy products in order to get the nutrients that you need. Okay, so now one of the first, um, so one of the first nutrients that I want to focus on is folic acid. Now research has shown that a woman needs sufficiently high levels of folate in her blood for the spinal cord channel also called the neural tube, to close normally. So the neural tube closes around four weeks after conception, a time when most women don't even know they're pregnant. So, so mothers with low blood levels of folate can have a higher risk of conceiving a baby with spina bifida. So it's important that as you're trying to conceive that you already have a um, uh, maximum amount of folic acid needed in your, in your blood. So folic acid can improve fertility in both men and women. 
And good sources of folic acid are green leafy vegetables, whole grains, wheat germ, and citrus fruit. So the recommended amount is about 400 micrograms a day. Okay. Now the next um, nutrient that I want to focus on is vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 is an essential nutrient that the body cannot make on its own. So it must be obtained from food. It is a water-soluble vitamin that naturally occurs in many foods. So if your husband or your partner is suffering from a vitamin B12 deficiency, this means his sperm count is affected. So he is likely to have fertility problems. So vitamin B12 is not essential, not only essential for women, but it's also essential for men. So the deficiency of vitamin B12 is one of the most common causes of infertility, but it does not necessarily prevent the installation of pregnancy. However, studies does show that if your body does not get enough vitamin B12, even if you get pregnant, the risk of miscarriage um, is higher in women who aren't, uh, uh, who don't have higher levels of vitamin B12. So uh, recommended dietary allowance for adults is uh, about 2.4 micrograms a day. And the foods that are highest in vitamin B12 tend to be seafood and corn meat. So if you're not already getting enough um, B12, you might want to consider a supplement. Now, the next um, supplement I'd like to talk about is vitamin C. I know we all think we're getting enough vitamin C in our diet, and chances are you might be. Um, if you're eating enough sweet peppers and red peppers and yellow peppers, uh, even hot peppers are loaded with uh, more than 100% of the, the recommended daily allowance in one, in a one cup serving. But vitamin C is important because it's an antioxidant and it improves your overall health and it reduces stress and it increases fertility among both men and women. Um, it is high, it's a, it's high, it's a high antioxidant, um, such as vitamin E, beta carotene, and zinc. So research has shown that while a woman's eggs are formed as part of her ovaries when she's still a developing fetus, taking this vitamin also assist with optimum health necessary for ovulation and conception. So this immune booster, vitamin C, will aid in infertility health for successful conception, as well as the health formation of a developing fetus when pregnancy does take place. So a dietary intake of about 250 milligrams uh, per day is a good starting point for men. And um, you know, as in terms of protecting the sperm, as well as ensuring which sperm production. So, uh, so it's really important that you're getting enough, and you can get, um, you know, high levels of vitamin C and arceola cherries, strawberries, grapefruit, pineapple, limes, lemons, passion fruit, cantaloupe, honeybees, papayas, and kiwis. All great sources of vitamin C. Now, the next, uh, the next nutrient I'd like to focus on is calcium. And I know everybody knows how important calcium is for both men and women. To, um, in general, but also especially for uh, conception. And non dairy sources include um, vegetables such as Chinese cabbage, kale, and broccoli. And then when we think of calcium, we think of milk, yogurt, cheese, all of those are great sources of calcium as well. But the best way to get calcium is from your food. It does take some focus to get the recommended 1,000 milligrams a day from food, but it can be done. Um, the two different studies have shown calcium's role in conception. One study shows that calcium is a, is a vital ingredient in the process of triggering growth in embryos. So the more calcium in the surrounding fluid, the better. Okay? So it's important that we're getting, and, it, and I know that a lot of us are focusing on trying to reduce the amount of fat in our diet, and so we're doing low-fat dairy. But studies have shown that for women uh, who are trying to conceive, that it's really important that you are doing, you, you're getting whole fat dairy in your diet, and so versus low fat dairy. So whole fat dairy, uh, like milk and yogurt and cheese, are, are very important, but you don't do the, the skin <laughs> or the milk fat version, okay? Because you need that, that you, know, you need all of that, those nutrients in order to enhance your fertility. Now, the next slide focuses on iron, and uh, iron helps prevent miscarriage. And so the recommended amount is about 30 milligrams a day, and you can get it from green leafy vegetables, 
Um, according to the natural fertility, though, getting enough iron is essential for the formation of healthy blood, blood cells that are needed for fertility and success. So it is a building block uh, for increasing fertility by helping to balance ovulation. So it's important that you're getting enough uh, iron in your diet. And you can start to, to kind of see uh, a pattern here. You know, most of the nutrients that I mentioned to you are all um, in just the fruits and vegetables and, um, you know, the, the uh, fish and, you know, if you're eating meat, you know, organic cage-free meat, okay? The next um, nutrient is, uh, is zinc. And zinc is important for male fertility especially. And the recommended amount is about 11 milligrams a day. It's one of the most important functions of zinc in the male body is that it helps in enhancing the quality of sperm. So a recent research showed that men who had low levels of zinc in the body also had a low sperm quality. So while men who are administered zinc supplements had a high quality of sperm and high fertility levels. So you can, you know, increase your levels of zinc through wheat germs, uh, seeds, and also soil. But it needs to be organic, uh, not the genetically modified organic. And if I'm going too fast, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> and certainly as I'm going along, uh, again, I want to remind you to just type your questions in and I'll make sure to get to them uh, at the end of the presentation. The next slide, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, flaxseed oil. And flaxseed oil is a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. It helps improve uterine function. It's also an essential fatty acid that contains hormone balancing ligands and phytoestrogen. Uh, and phytoestrogens are plant estrogens that help balance a woman's estrogen and progesterone levels. So it helps to increase fertility and the odds of conception. The recommended daily dose is about 400 milligrams. And so I usually add flaxseed oil or ground sprouted flaxseed, a tablespoon to my spring smoothies each day. But um, you can definitely, you know, use it to make uh, dressings. You can add it to, you can put it over your salad instead of olive oil and some vinegar. You can use flaxseed oil and vinegar. There's a number of ways you can use it, but it's definitely something you want to incorporate into your diet because of all the health benefits of it that I just mentioned. And I just want to stress that, you know, a lot of people think that, okay, you know, there's kind of a, a camp that says, you know, if you're trying to carry it or you need to, um, you know, I, I just think that, you know, you just need to eat real food. And whether you're vegetarian, vegan, or you're a carnivore, I think none of that really matters. I think the most important thing is that you're, you're eating organic food as much as possible because you want to avoid the the pesticides, the fungicides, the herbicides, and all the preservatives and hormones and all the other additives that are in the foods that we get at the grocery store today. And so, you know, whether or not you are eating meat, that's fine. But if you're going to eat meat, it's best to eat meat that is um, that's free from antibiotics and hormones. And so I know that may cost a little bit more. But it's important because all everything we eat is absorbed into our body and into our organs and into our bloodstream. And the whole um, idea behind a fertility diet is making sure that we, you know, get as many of those toxins out of our body as possible. So that's why eating a lot of fruits and vegetables are important because that's a natural way of detoxifying your body. So you don't have to be vegetarian, you don't have to be vegan, but you definitely want to try to include more whole fruits and vegetables into your diet so that your body can naturally detoxify each day, getting rid of all the, you know, the stuff that may impede or, or hinder you from uh, conceiving. Now, the next slide, I know it's very intuitive, but <laughs> water, the importance of water. You know, water basically impacts every function in our body, including ovulation, fertilization, and pregnancy. Um, you know, I, I know that we don't even think about this, but the water supports a ton of reproductive processes, uh, including our uterine health, uh, including our egg health, and including our cervical mucus. And so it's really important that we're getting enough water on a daily basis, and that will vary from person to person what enough is, 
but you definitely want, I think most of us need to increase our water intake because a lot of us are dehydrated on a daily basis and don't even realize it. But this is, becomes increasingly more important when you're trying to become pregnant, that you're drinking just you know, more than enough water to make sure that you are, um, you know, the ovulation fertilization uh, process is, is enhanced. Okay. Now, the next slide um, basically looks at the top 10 superfoods to boost fertility. And now, many of these foods are, you know, the nutrients we've spoken about um, on previous slides, but, you know, eggs, whole milk, olive oil, broccoli, almonds, avocados, oysters, uh, black bean, salmon, brown rice, all of these foods are <clears throat> excellent sources of the iron, oh, that folic acid, the omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, the, um, the vitamin B12, these are all great sources of those foods. So you can see that eating real food is important and necessary for making sure that, it's, you know, making good choices is going to be key. But these are some of the top ones that are that are um, supposed to boost fertility and help, you know, enhance that process. Now, um, I am the queen of smoothies. I drink a green smoothie every day. And usually my green smoothie usually includes something green. So it's usually either kale, collards, or spinach. But I also usually include a vegetable or two, I mean a fruit or two, which usually is a banana and some type of berry. So usually it's blueberries, blackberries, or strawberries. But also to give it more of a powerful nutritious punch, I also usually include chia seeds, maca, Bee pollen. Um, I usually have coconut oil or coconut water, um, coconut milk or almond milk. Um, I don't usually put pepper in mine, but I'm not trying to get pregnant. But for those of you that are trying to conceive, this pepper is a great source of whole fat uh, dairy that uh, you certainly can add. And it also has the added benefit of being a probiotic, which uh, aids in our digestive health. So this is just a simple, you know, little smoothie uh, recipe that you can start to <clears throat> incorporate into your daily diet to help you get all those nutrients that we talked about before. Okay. Now another one on the next slide is called natural fertility. Um, it is a juice. So if, for those of you that like to juice or want to start juicing, um, you can juice the following: two stalks of celery a half to one apple, a half inch of ginger, a handful of parsley, and a half a lemon. You can juice this and you can drink this. And this, you know, if you can do this, you know, however often you can do it, <laughs> it certainly will help. You know, you're going to get a, a, a great um, boost in terms of your vitamins uh, from the vegetables and the fruit. But also, you know, you're going to be strengthening your digestive system, which increases, you know, which improves your immune system which is awesome for women that are trying to get pregnant. Okay. And now the next slide is just really just kind of to give you an example of some of the ingredients that I usually uh, include in my smoothies that you also may want to include. I know a lot of people are drinking smoothies these days and, you know, when you can't make your own, people are stopping by like Jamba Juice and some of the other places that are now featuring smoothies. But, and those are great. But if we want to take our smoothies to the next level and um, make them even more powerful and work for us, then you might want to include some of these other ingredients that I mentioned, like the chia seeds, like the maca, um, you know, coconut water, um, adding like your pepper, uh, or whatever dairy source you want to use. Uh, and this is, I don't do dairy, but you, you definitely want to try to include some whole fat dairy in your diet when you're trying to get pregnant. But I do include almond milk or coconut milk as well. But avocados are great for women trying to get pregnant, as well as spinach, kale, berries, um, those things. And then try to avoid um, sweeteners that aren't natural. So you want to try, if you need to sweeten it, I don't usually add any sweeteners to my smoothie just because I feel like it's sweet enough from the bananas and the blueberries. But you can, you know, if you need to add honey, you certainly can, you know, add honey or or any of those types of natural 
sources of sugar. Um, they also have spirulina on here, and spirulina is a great plant-based source of protein that I usually add a teaspoon to my smoothies every day. Uh, just because, like I said, I don't I don't eat meat, so I have to make sure I'm getting my protein from the spirulina. Chia seeds are an excellent source of protein as well. Um, and so, and also coconut um, milk or almond milk. Now, the next slide just really talks about um, the, the nutrients in chia seeds. And I know many of you are like, well, what's chia seeds and why do I need to eat them? Well, chia seeds are like super bad, super food. I mean, it's awesome. Um, so all you need is one to two tablespoons a day of chia seeds. And you can sprinkle them over your oatmeal. You can sprinkle them over your soup. Uh, you can sprinkle them over your salad. I usually add them to my green smoothie. So when you see my green smoothies in the morning, it's basically a blender full of green stuff. And I drink it all. But, you know, of course, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, for some of you may have to build up to it and you may, you know, add uh, a tablespoon of chia seed uh, versus two, or a teaspoon of flax seed versus you know a whole tablespoon. You want to kind of build up to it, but the benefits, the nutritious benefits to them are amazing. So two tablespoons only have about 85 calories, but you're getting 100% more omega-3 fatty acids than salmon. You're getting 41% uh, of your daily fiber, six times worth calcium than milk, 32% of your daily magnesium. Um, and each seed contains 16% of each vegetable protein. So remember I told you I, I do chia seeds because it's a great source of protein, and this is why. Uh, six times more iron than spinach, 64% more potassium than a banana, um, and then it double the antioxidants found in blueberries. So why would you not want to eat chia seeds? <laughs> so, you know, definitely, um, you know, try to include at least one tablespoon of chia seeds a day in your diet, okay? And now the next superfood that I really, really highly recommend that you include in your diet if you aren't already doing it is maca. Now, maca, all you need, you don't need a whole lot. A tablespoon is probably sufficient. Um, but it balances hormones, it boosts fertility, it improves, improves skin and hair, and it increases your energy. So I also add a tablespoon of that to my smoothie in the morning as well. And, you know, again, another great source of omega-3 fatty acids. So certainly you want to, to try to boost your, again, boost your intake of those omega-3 fatty acids, and maca is a great way to do so. Now, the next slide is just another example of a smoothie recipe. You might not be able to read it as well, but it's called a strawberry kale smoothie. And so, again, it's just another way to incorporate a lot of the nutrients that we talked about through whole foods, um, utilizing fruits and vegetables. So this one, you know, you can use kale, uh, which is, you know, I'm in love with kale uh, and spinach and, and, and collards. And so... I usually include one of those, and then you can, uh, I usually do a banana in mine. Some people don't like bananas, like Reverend Stacy, but I usually include a banana in mine. Um, I usually do strawberries or blueberries or both, um, and then coconut water. And then, uh, again, I add all the additional, like maca, flaxseed, chia seeds, spirulina. I add that as well, but you don't have to. But if you're trying to make your smoothies take them to the next level, you want to add those as well and just blend all of that in, a, in the blender and drink up, okay? Very simple, very easy, but a great way to get a lot of these nutrients that we talked about into your diet. Now, the next slide, um, I'm going to transition. I talked a lot about what we should be incorporating into our diet. Now, I'm going to talk about some things that we might want to avoid if we're trying to conceive. So, I'm just going to list the top 10 things. Um, and many of these you probably are already aware of and you probably already heard. Um, caffeine. Caffeine is something that is recommended that you avoid because it increases your risk of miscarriage and, and estrogen. So uh, instead of caffeine, try herbal tea, water, and of course, the smoothie. <laughs> and if you, like I said, if you add those uh, superfoods that I told you about, the maca, the chia, the flax, it's going to give you the energy that you need, that you're looking for. Because that's basically why most people are addicted to caffeine, because it gives them energy. 
So, you know, rather than going to coffee or Coke for your energy, definitely try, you know, the smoothies with adding some of those superfoods in there. Or if you just want something warm, uh, people like drinking coffee because it's warm, um, drink, you know, try drinking some herbal tea, you know, especially like raspberry tea, which is good for women that are trying to conceive, okay? Uh, conventional meat, I talked about this as well. Uh, synthetic, you know, a lot of synthetic hormones and antibiotics can be found in conventional meat, which can impact normal, the normal reproduction cycle. So instead of conventional meat, try organic, free range, or grass fed meat. Of course, it costs a little bit more, but it, it, it's worth it uh, in order to avoid all of those toxins from the antibiotics and the hormones that are in our, our food. Uh, conventional dairy. Um, again, but for the same reason. So, of course, you want to do whole fat dairy, but you want to try to get the cage free eggs, you want to try to get the organic eggs, you want to try to get the, the milk that's hormone free. You want to try to do it as much as possible. And then, of course, number four, avoiding the sugar, uh, which, of course, sodas have a ton of sugar in them. So, we want to make sure that we are avoiding all those refined sugars, artificial flavors, colors, caffeine that are found in our um, soda. So, instead of that, drinking more water, um, you know, more whole fruit or whole vegetable juices, you know, if you can juice, that's great. If not, of course, there's a lot of, you know, uh, manufacturers out there now that are making all natural juices that are made just from the fruits and vegetables with no added sugars and no added uh, additives. So look for those. And then also we want to avoid high amounts of sugar that are found in alcohol. Um, I know that, um, you know, they say you can drink, uh, you know, like a glass a week or a glass a day. But really, you know, alcohol has a lot of sugar in it. And so, you know, again, for the same reasons that we're avoiding sugar and soda, we want to also avoid the, the sugars that are found in alcohol. Processed soy food, you know, that's another one um, that, you know, it's, it's known to mimic estrogen and has been associated with hormonal problems such as breast cancer, ovulatory problems, and other reproductive issues. And so processed soy food is different from, like, the organic soy food. But most of the stuff that we see in the store is processed soy food, the genetically modified. So it doesn't have as, as much of the uh, health benefits as the organic soy. So uh, that's the reason. And then also cigarettes. We all know why we don't want to, you know, why we want to avoid cigarettes. Again, link to crop fertility problems and can lead to premature and low birth weight babies. Also, we want to avoid white carbohydrates. So the refined carbs, such as white flour, white bread, white rice, pasta. They all turn into sugar in our bodies, and of course, can feed yeast and provide minimum, and they provide minimal nutritional value. So, you know, whole wheat, whole grain, uh, as much as possible for the brown rice, the wheat bread, the wheat pasta. And then, of course, uh, fat free diet foods, those are usually loaded with lots and lots of sugar, so uh, as well as artificial flavoring and other additives. So, versus fat free foods, Eat whole foods, but try to eat whole fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, you know, organic meats and organic foods. And then lastly, hydrogenated oils, so your trans fat, you know, and that's in a lot of our processed foods. A lot of our foods that come in boxes and cans have a lot of trans fat in them. So versus um, trans fat, you want to try to use the olive oils, the coconut oils, the flaxseed oils. Um, those great food oils, those are much better for you. Our body recognizes them as real food. Okay. So the next slide uh, is um, really kind of focusing now, transitioning over to the importance of fitness. And um, as Bridget mentioned, in addition to being a certified health coach, I'm also a fitness instructor. So I do teach uh, fitness classes, and um, I, I highly recommend that you incorporate moderate exercise into your diet. Uh, it's so important because it, you know, kind of lessens the likelihood of high blood pressure and glucose metabolism problems that can often interfere with fertility, as well as making it less likely during pregnancy that complications such as preeclampsia and muscular 
skeletal aches continues to occur. So being active can be a powerful antidote to physical and emotional pain. So it's important that if you're not already doing some moderate form of exercise, that you, you know, incorporate that. Either this is nothing uh, but walking, you know, for 30 minutes each day or doing yoga. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, in fact, it shouldn't be anything too rigorous unless that was something you were already doing. Um, you know, I wouldn't start like a, you know, trying to train for a marathon now while you're getting, while you're trying to conceive. But um, but definitely you want to to try to incorporate moderate exercise into your diet. Okay. Uh, the next slide just really focuses on what kind of follows with the moderate exercise, which helps with this next one, stress management. Um, you know, I exercise every day because it helps me to manage my stress. And I think that, you know, when you're trying to become pregnant, um, you know, stress management can reduce depression, anxiety, anger, fatigue, all of which are commonly part of life of people struggling with infertility. So, um, you know, those negative emotions diminish, um, you know, they become, become a little bit more minima minimized when you uh, find ways to manage your stress. So whether it be, um, you know, through meditation, uh, through prayer, uh, you know, through yoga, moderate exercise, but finding what works for you uh, to help manage your stress is going to be very key. Brain with the pituitary and the ovary interfering with both the maturation of an egg and the ovulation process. So we, we definitely want to minimize and eliminate that as much as possible. So whatever you, whatever, you know, whatever, um, means that would mean for you because you know for different people uh stress management comes in really cool and i just included some relaxation and stress management stress management resources from you know examples for you on this next page the next slide um that you might want to take a look at and we see if this is uh, some of these books or some of these articles might be a benefit to you when it comes to relaxation and stress management. And um, just, you know, in closing, I just want to say that it's so important that we began and develop a strong foundation for health and wellness now because when you do succeed and you, you have this, this growing gift in you, and then they they are they come into the world. Um, it's important that we then transfer those healthy eating habits and healthy lifestyle onto our children. And so this is a picture of my son in our garden, and he helps me garden every summer. And now he is a huge fan of fruits and vegetables because that's what he grew up on, and that's what he loves. So um, I just want to say what what we do now has a huge impact on um, generations to come. So let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And that is all. So if you have any questions, um, I will now go through and take a look and see if I can answer them. So Bridget, am I reading the questions or are you? Your line is now unmuted. Oh, sorry about that, Mia. I had to come back and... and uh... I mute myself. I can actually read them. We had a a bunch of them. So I'll go ahead and just scroll back up. We have a lot of great questions from the ladies on the line and um, online. So I'm going to start um, with a question from Mississippi. And can you hear me okay, Mia? I hear you this time. Thank you. Excellent. So this question says, would you recommend juicing in order to get the suggested amount of fruits and veggies? I find myself juicing now because I find myself unable to actually eat the amount that I need. Okay, that is an excellent question. And actually, one of the, if you remember, one of the juice, one of the recipes that I had on here was the recipe. A fertility uh, juicing recipe with the um, celery and the parsley, the ginger, the lemon. That was a juicing recipe. 
And so I would definitely recommend that you continue juicing. However, you, you want to make sure that in addition to juicing, that you're also eating whole fruits and vegetables and getting your, you know, your nuts and seeds and your whole fat dairy, all of that in as well as your omega-3s because, you know, juicing is one component and it definitely helps you to get more of the nutrients that you need because it's, it's sometimes difficult for us to get everything um, in just, you know, three meals a day. So juicing helps you to get those additional nutrients in. But also, the other thing about juicing, though, that I think um, eating whole fruits and vegetables will help you with is the fiber. You're not getting the fiber uh, in the juicing uh, that you would get if you were drinking a smoothie or if you were eating, you know, uh, some steamed kale or, you know, eating a big salad. So that's why I say juicing is great. It enhances um, your whole food diet, but it shouldn't be something that you're doing um, just by itself. You know, it should definitely be incorporating incorporated into a great diet. So let's answer your question, Angela. We'll keep we'll keep going because I've got to scroll all the way down to see if Angela responded. But we'll keep moving along. Um, I think that's fantastic information. So now we have a question about the flaxseed oil. Um, we have a question from Willowbrook, where Sonia wants to know, does flaxseed oil come in a pill? Yeah, flaxseed oil does come in a pill. However, um, and I know that you know many of you are probably like, I don't know if I want to be taking uh, you know, a tablespoon or two of, of, of flaxseed oil. Or, um, but you can, it also comes in a powder. Um, that you can incorporate into your, like if you're cooking, you can put, you know, a couple of tablespoons of flaxseed oil into your, um, the, if you're making something whole grain or if you're making a smoothie, you can put it in your smoothie, you can make, you can sprinkle it over your oatmeal. There's a number of different things you can do with flaxseed oil and flaxseed powder. Uh, you want to make sure you get it ground or if, if you just buy the flaxseed. You know, to ground it yourself. I always buy it already sprouted and ground. You can buy it uh, already like that. And so that makes it really easy for your body to digest it. Uh, but the flaxseed oil is even easier. So if you, you can definitely find it in a pill, but it, you know, in a health food store. So I would recommend that you either look online or if you have a health food store near you, you should be able to find it there. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. And we have another question um, from Ohio, from Janelle, who says, I know fresh is better, but do you do you still receive nutrients from from rather organic frozen fruits? I tend to use frozen fruits in my smoothies sometimes to save time and or money. I only use fresh veggies, though. OK. <laughs> That's an excellent question, Janelle. And actually, in the winter time, it becomes a little bit more difficult to get like fresh berries. And so I buy frozen berries, but they're organic. But I do buy the frozen berries, and um, I put them in my my blender and blend them right up along with all my other smoothie uh, ingredients. So definitely, fresh is better. But if you need to buy frozen, buy try to buy organic frozen. So that you can make sure that you're still not getting all those, you know, toxins that you would on fresh, you know, the fresh food and vegetables. OK, but yeah, you can definitely buy the frozen um, fruit. Uh, I would definitely recommend the fresh vegetables, but the fruit, uh, especially like in the winter when it's a little bit more difficult to get the fresh, you know, fruit, then I would definitely do that. And then sometimes what I do as well is I'll buy the fresh fruit, like if I see it somewhere and it's a good price. You know, I'll buy the fresh fruit, but then I'll cut them up and put them in baggies so that, you know, I can just reach in the freezer and pull them out, put out like the, the day's worth of, you know, mango or pineapple or berries or bananas, you know, out of the freezer and just plop them right in the blender along with all my other ingredients and blend them right up. So, you know, you have a number of different options that you can use. Um, you know, it's cheaper to, to buy it, you know, fresh and then chop them up and put them in baggies and put them in the freezer 
and then pull them out when you need them. And then they last longer that way too. You know, so a lot of bananas go brown so fast that, you know, you got to eat them quick, you know, but if you just chop them up and put them in a freezer bag and throw them in the freezer, you know, they last forever. So that's what I you would recommend when you can't do the fresh thing. Sounds good. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting hungry. I always talk about all this fruit and freshness. I'm excited about trying some of these some of these recipes and um okay there was a question about forwarding the slides so that the ladies um, on the call and online can have the recipes we are in the process of making sure that um, you can replay the webinar so look for that on the website and we'll definitely share that via social media next week and uh, moving on to the next question um, this one says, I've noticed that some multivitamins have soy in them, for example, GNC prenatal vitamins. Any recommendations on multivitamins or prenatals? Perhaps this was covered before um, she joined the call, uh, which I, I actually, I don't know that we talked about um, multivitamins, Nia. So can you shed a little light on that? Absolutely, yeah. And multivitamins are definitely great, especially for those of us that are that don't that feel like we aren't getting enough of those nutrients through whole fruits and vegetables and whole foods. Um, but certainly, you want to look at the ingredient content. And um, I would recommend either going online and doing a little bit of research on the vitamins that don't have soy or have, if they do have soy, that it's the organic and not the genetically modified soy. Um, but, but you know, I would really recommend that, you know, you try to avoid it altogether and you get a multivitamin that does not have the soy and they have them. Um, you may just have to go to a health food store or go online to um, and, and search out the, um, the vitamins that don't have them online. But certainly they are out there. I, I don't have the names of the vitamin, multivitamins that don't have soy in them, but I know they do exist. And those are the ones that will probably be a little bit um, healthier and safer for you, especially um, with trying to get pregnant. Sounds good. And is that the end of the questions? It looks like you answered all of the questions, Mia, and we have some replies um, that the ladies' questions were answered, and thank you for that. So I guess unless we have anything else that's coming through, that is it for our Q&A session. So thank you so much, Mia. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining, and I hope this has been beneficial to you all. Um, I know a lot of the information is very uh, intuitive um, in terms of what, you know, what enhances fertility, but it, it doesn't help hurt to be reminded of just, you know, how simple it is in terms of just, you know, a matter of incorporating more whole fruits and vegetables into our diet. And then some of those other little, you know, little key things, those superfoods that can add an extra punch and really uh, help to enhance it even further. So um, if you have any other questions, feel free to, you know, you can always, um, you know, go on our website, Facility for Colorado's website, and um, post questions. Uh, we'd be more than happy to follow up with you with um, any other additional questions that you may have. And again, you know, the recipes and things like that will be made available to you via a replay of the webinar recorded, um, but we also may provide some of those on the website as well. So thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mia. And also we have okay. Mia's uh, contact information, Mia, our health coach and fitness expert from Powered by Nature Nutrition. So uh, please feel free to stay in touch with her by going on to her website, www.poweredbynaturenutrition.com. Of course, you can find Fertility for Colored Girls online at our website at www.fertilityforcoloredgirls.org. You can always email us any questions at info at fertilityforcoloredgirls.org. And you know we have a very active Facebook page, facebook.com backslash Fertility for Colored Girls NFP. And we share a lot of great stories, a lot of amazing tips on there from um, our supporters and from Reverend Stacy. 
And just a, a quick announcement, if you haven't seen it this past week, I think it was last week, Reverend Stacy and Little Shiloh were on CBS News Chicago sharing their wonderful story of hope. Just one more reason to just stay connected, stay prayerful, and stay hopeful that you will fight infertility and triumph over it. So if you have not seen that story, it's wonderful, and it's on our Facebook page as well as our website. So just keep in touch with us for upcoming events. We're looking forward to a fantastic year. Thank you for joining us, and y'all have a wonderful night.